So we're going to put together about two or three videos. We're going to have one of the videos on how to identify the sassafras tree and some of the medicinal purposes you could use it for. And then we're going to have probably one or two videos on making some root beer with it. So today we're going to make the most very basic form of root beer with it, which is basically going to be your water, your sassafras, and some form of sugar. So this is our sassafras that we gathered already. We've been letting it dry for a few weeks, but we're going to clean it, wash it, make sure there's no dirt on it, and process it a little bit to go ahead and make our sassafras. So all we're going to do here is rinse it off. Try to make sure you get all your dirt off the root. And if you got like a toothbrush or a bristle brush, if you really want to get in there and get that dirt off, you could do that. These little roots that are coming off your main root, if those break off, don't worry about it. As we're cleaning these roots off, we're kind of starting to scrape them already. Make sure they're nice and clean. But that smell of sassafras is just so very potent. That smell coming off smells amazing. See that dark in there? That's actually some dirt. So you could get a toothbrush and try to clean that dirt out. So we got our sassafras root rinsed off pretty good. So you could process this down as far as you want. If all you have the ability to is chop it up in big pieces, that's what you could do. You could take shavings off with your knife, cut it down. As far as you could even grind it and put it in a mortar and pedestal and make like a fine powder out of it. But we're gonna go ahead and shave it down some, make a little pile of it. But we're not gonna take it down all the way down to a powder though. We're gonna leave it in bigger chunks today. So we're not making a huge batch of this stuff today. So this right here is all I'm going to use for today. And you can cut this up or as, you know, as small or as big as you want it. I left my chunks kind of big today. I didn't feel like doing the labor of grinding it down or chopping it up even smaller. But we're going to put this in our pot here. We're going to put some water in it. As far as your water goes, it really doesn't matter what you use, but I'm going to use a filtered water that doesn't have any chlorine in it. So hopefully I'll make it taste just a little bit better. So with just about all the cooking I do, I don't ever actually measure anything out. Very rarely will I measure something. So as far as your, how much does the root weigh and how much water volume do I have, I really don't know. I got a handful of sassafras, I got a few cups of water. So basically as that water started to come up in the pot, when the sassafras started to float, 
and I had a, a little bit of water under it, I'm going to call that done. So the stronger you want your sassafras flavor, add more root to it or less water to it, but don't always just boil it longer. So ideally our boil time is going to be between like 12 and 15 minutes. So if you start boiling over 15 minutes, it's going to start to release some of those tannins in the root and the flavor of your sassafras tea is not going to be as good. So like when you're cooking anything else, I went ahead and took a little spoonful of this, blew on it, took a little taste test. So the sassafras flavor is definitely coming out, but it actually seemed like it was a little bit too strong. So I'm going to add some more filtered water to it, and it's going to drop the temperature down and we'll have to pick it back up again. But it, it, to my flavoring of it, I think it would use a little water in it. We're kind of mixing this to taste. So if you taste it and you think it's it's really good and you want to keep it the way it is, then go ahead and do that. But also, with it being the way it is right now, it has no sugar or anything in it. So it did kind of have a, uh, a sour and uh, acidic flavor to it a little bit. And our time is getting pretty close here. We got about eight minutes left. So before our time is up, the last two minutes, I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. And we're going to add some brown sugar to it. So I tasted this and I think our flavor is just about where we want it and we're coming up real close to our 15 minute mark. So I'm going to turn it down to a simmer and we're going to add our sugar. So you could use any kind of sweetener that you want to use but if you want a little richer flavor you're going to want to shoot for brown sugar. So to start with, I already got pre-measured here, but we're going to add a half a cup of brown sugar. And this is pretty hot here so I'm going to use my spoon here so I don't splash. If you wanted to, you could have pre-filtered the roots out of your water. But I went ahead and just put it in there now, and then we'll filter it all later on together. So really, this is much more like a sassafras tea versus like a root beer. So keep in mind, you could make this, and you could change your recipe up a little bit. But you could also add yeast and you could actually ferment this like you would an actual beer. You could also, if you had a carbonation machine, or if you go to the store and buy carbonated water, you could add carbonation to this to be more like the soda that you drink. We're not going to add any carbonation on it and we're not going to ferment it either on this one. We're just going to go ahead and chill it, get it ice cold, and just drink it the way it is. All right, so our cooking process of our sassafras tea is almost done. So just kind of as a reference, we got a two-quart soup pot here. I got probably six cups of water, maybe seven. It's about an inch from the, the crease of the top of the pot here. I got a handful of sassafras root in there that was chopped up. It's about an inch and a half long. And then we also added three-quarters cup of the brown sugar. So you guys see me put the half cup in there. I mixed it in there, dissolved it, tasted it, and needed just a hair bit more, so we added that extra quarter in there. So I got three quarters cup brown sugar all together. That's all we have in here. And the taste of it is really good already. It's, all, it's a very, very good taste. It uh, has a real lot of aromatic smell to it. And it's when you look in the pot, it looks almost black, like a really dark black tea. But in the spoon, you can kind of see it's like an amber color. Not too far from a coffee consistency. But we want to go ahead and strain this. We don't want these roots to sit in this water too long. We don't want it to turn flavor or get acidic on there. So we're going to go ahead and filter this off while it's still hot. So we just got a glass bowl here, a standard strainer, and two layers of cheesecloth. This is why you want to go ahead and rinse your sassafras root off because that's not a super fine filter. So if you had dirt and sand on there, that dirt and sand could still go through your cheesecloth.
So we're gonna put our sassafras tea into mason jars, and that way we can put it in the refrigerator and get it nice and cold. And then I like mine ice cold, so I'll probably stick it in the freezer for another 15 minutes so I get as cold as I can. But basically we're gonna go ahead and pour the sassafras tea or liquid into our mason jars. And as this sits in the fridge, it'll actually have some sediment a lot of times on the bottom of it. So you could drink it as is if you're not worried about it, but if you want it as smooth as possible, when you settle this into your refrigerator and you go to pour it out, you can pour it and just make sure you pour real slow and that way that sediment will stay in the bottom of your storage container. If you guys look into my bowl right here, you could see some of that sediment in there that I'm talking about. So we got our sassafras tea all done. We got them in the mason jars. It's going to settle a little bit and we're going to cool it off. I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the fridge for a little bit, let it cool off. We'll take it out and we'll taste test it. All right, so our sassafras tea is done. I put it in the freezer for a few minutes, got it nice and cold. It came out really, really good, tastes amazing. And just remember, anytime you guys are eating or consuming any kind of like wild edibles, make sure you do your, your own research. There is some studies where people say you shouldn't consume sassafras, but I think that's really more or less in high concentrations, more so if you're consuming like the oil from it. But the sassafras tea here was really good. I do recommend trying it, and we'll catch you next time.